Somewhere out there in the world, you're listening to WLTH. This is AM 1370 on your radio dial. Sound off with none, none other than EVE, the best that I can be here on WLTH Radio. The views expressed by the host and the callers of the show are necessarily the views of WLTH Radio management owners and sponsors. Well, what a change of weather today, guys, huh? Ooh, we 6:05. It's five minutes after the hour, and it's uh, overcasted out there. I uh, wish we had Las Vegas weather. Now I'm sure you agree, 80 degrees out there, right? But it's okay. We still, you know, we're kind of confused. Do we still wear boots and winter clothing, long sleeves, jackets, hoodies? You know, I always tell the kids, make sure you take extra clothing with you. You know, and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Uh, talk about Omar for a minute. He's talking about shorts. I said, I don't think so. It's actually going to get colder. Why is that? Because when we think it's warm for one hour, and then it changes drastically. So it felt warmer this morning than what it does right now. So you guys be safe out there. Dress uh, appropriately accordingly to according to this uh, weather because you just never know. You cannot trust this weather at all. I don't think uh, we could ever trust it from now on because you just don't know. It's been this winter was delayed for forever. Some people probably thought, is it ever going to warm up? Uh, many people actually complained all winter that they had enough cold. It is cold in here, Omar. Put the heater on over there. Put the little the look-alike uh, fireplace kind of thing over there because I'm cold too. And for those of you that are on Twitter, I'm letting you know I'm on the air now. Thank you so much for following me on Twitter. And that is, uh, remember, 1370 AM. At Official Eve G is actually um, the following page here on the air here in WLTH. Great things. And, you know, I was in awe for something that I saw. uh, And I'm going to share this beautiful song, a message to parents, a message from a daughter, a message from a mother, a message, a message, period. You know, it it may be a little lengthy, but I'm going to play it in the middle of the the show. Not right now, Mars. I'm going to play in the middle of the show and and, and tell me what you think. You can sound off here at WLTH Radio, 219-85-1371. Buenas tardes a todos. Good evening, everyone. This is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to all of you. And, you know, I was uh, actually um, looking on some, some things that were on, on Facebook uh, and on Twitter. And kudos to Community Hospital. You guys know that there is a second um, outbreak of a second person in Florida. And I guess, uh, you know, Community Hospital, you know, went way overboard, overboard or overprepared, actually well prepared, should I say, um, because they actually had their staff in the ER well trained. So I, I saw this on the Washington Post, um, how an Indiana hospital got it right when MERS showed up at the door. Well, 
Um, there's now, as I said, two confirmed cases of deadly Middle East respiratory syndrome in the United States, and neither was discovered at a big teaching hospital like Massachusetts General in Boston or Mount Sinai in New York, which only emphasizes the need for all health care personnel to be ready to respond to new crises the way medical authorities at Community Hospital in Munster, Indiana did when they uh, when this country's first MERS case showed up in emergency room April 28th. What I'm blessed about, it was one day after I got my dad, really after my dad was released from the hospital, that same hospital, same symptoms that this person that came in with MERS. Um, God is great. So at this community hospital, it's not some tiny facility in the middle of nowhere. It's, it, it's in a bedroom community 30 miles from downtown Chicago, has 430 beds, and sees 70,000 people in its emergency department annually. Still, MERS might not have been the first thing on the minds of doctors and nurses when an still unnamed patient came into the emergency department with symptoms, but of what looked like a bad case of flu. And that's the point. Alan Kumer, the hospital's chief information officer, told them on Monday, staff are drilled on proper procedures for handling infectious diseases regardless of what they might be. So if they ever face a situation like this one, the danger can be contained. If they all know the protocols and standards and follow them, he said, when something like this comes in, the exposure is minimized. Thomas Frieden, head of Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, praised Community Hospital for its infection control and the rapid oscillation of about 50 health care workers and were exposed to that, uh, the MERS patients so they did not create a chain of transmission. In fact, one of the most interesting aspects of community's handling of uh, the case is how it figured out who had been near the patient. Officials there reviewed security tapes, tracked the sign-in required of everyone from doctors to housekeepers who entered the patient's room, and tracked them via the RFID badges they wear, which show their locations at all times. About 50 were sent home and kept isolated there until the hospital could be sure they had not had MERS, or they did not have MERS. They are returning to work Monday, Tuesday, Kumar said, and this actually came out, um, what's today's date, the 13th. So they'll be back on uh, Monday and Tuesday of this coming week, I guess. The patient, a U.S. resident who had been working in a health care facility in Riyadh, or Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, arrived in the emergency department in a busy Monday afternoon that was immediately taken to a triage room. A bit of luck for the community staff. The emergency room wasn't slammed with patients, as it was when I talked to Coomer on Monday. The room was private and equipped with a negative airflow system so that even when someone opened the door, air flowed inward, not outward, contained the virus, Coomer said. The air is not vented through the hospital's regular ducts, but sent through a special system with filters designed to destroy bacteria and viruses. Three hours later, the patient who needed oxygen and fluids was admitted to the hospital medical floor where he was again placed in a private room with special ventilation and seen by a primary care physician. By Tuesday, when an infectious disease specialist interviewed him over the phone, everyone who came in contact with him was required to wear gloves, gowns, masks, and eye protection. Coomer said, and the patient was put on a course of uh, intravenous antibiotics because doctors weren't sure whether his symptoms, which looked like pneumonia, were bacteria or viral. The specialist asked the patient about his recent travel. If that, if that question was asked in the emergency department, it didn't trigger suspicions of MERS. An order at test for the virus, which, was killed, which has killed 145 people so far, the vast majority of them in Saudi Arabia. The specialist sent a sample of the man's uh, sputum to the state health department, and CDC confirmed that MERS diagnosed Thursday before holding a news conference on the situation Friday afternoon. The patient was better within a week, but spent a few extra days at the hospital as his discharge was planned. At this point, it appears that MERS picked the wrong hospital, the wrong state, and wrong country to try to get a foothold. Indiana Health Commissioner William Vanna said at news briefing Monday. Perhaps the most difficult problem for the hospital was reassuring the, the community at the news conference that the danger had been contained, Coomer said. For that, community turned out to an outside public relations firm for help, he said. By Monday, when officials were able to say that none of the 50 people exposed to the patient had shown signs of the virus, anxiety began to die down, he said. Now officials at the Dr. P. Phillips Hospital in Orlando, who are caught up in the second U.S. MERS case, have asked Community Hospital for advice on how to handle relations with their surrounding area, he said. 
Gomer said, when the hospital does a, most, a post-mortem examination of, of its response to extraordinary events, typically you find things that were done incorrectly that you want to fix the next time. We really haven't had much of that. So kudos to to be a hospital. I feel like I live there. Sometimes I feel like I work there. Um, my daughter was born there. I mean, Omar practically visited his youth uh, many times there. So kudos to them. How about that? And also, I was listening to um, the recorded video uh, from when Echo had that uh, meeting with Linda Ritz, the state superintendent. I was watching some of it, not all of it, but she was talking about literacy. She was talking about them having a committee for literacy, and I said, well, maybe I ought to sign up for it um, and see what, what I can get to also assist. I have a couple of books I could offer for literacy as well to read, and the thing about it is what I'm finding out is more and more students don't know how to read. So um, I, I'm stressing this to tell the parents that know how to read to please read. Just because they're not in school, summertime is coming, you are not to read. I mean, I, I, this is what I tell my kids. It's a waste of brain if you're not doing anything, if you're not having your mind to think, to do things, creative things, to invent things, to write things out or, or read, period. Read, kids, read. This is from the New York Times, guys. And for those of you that are just joining me, you're listening to Sound Off with EVE here on WLTH Radio. And um, I know I'm not that close, but that's okay. And uh, how, how's it taste, Omar? Good. All right. I brought in some din din. You know, i got to feed my, my boy, as some parents would say. got to make sure he's a growing boy. He's 20 years old and very proud of him. Sometimes I do have to still pull that ear, but that's okay. So read, kids, read. As an uncle, it's, I'm inconsistent about too many things. So I was reading... As I was going into this uh, uh, report uh, about reading, about the importance of reading, or lack thereof reading, actually. So I suggest that we all pick up a book this summer and read to our kids if they are that age that you must read to them. Or take them to the library. Have them pick up books. If they cannot read, they'll still look at the pictures. Have them identify what the story is just by looking at the pictures. It's very important that you keep them active. I was talking to a couple of people um, about doing things uh, to keep our kids active in the summer. I had a behind-closed-door meeting with uh, um, the only candidate that I know of right now that is going to be going up against Rahm Emanuel, and that's Frederick uh, Collins, he will be running against him, but I was talking to him and what he's looking at in making change. He is a Chicago cop. Um, he had mentioned some things, and I will be getting another interview with him to bring you more information about that because we want to work together. I was called, actually, by uh, um, his uh, uh, people to come in and talk with him and meet with him. I wanted to listen to his ideas, what he was looking for, what changes, if any, needed to be done for Chicago CPS, for safety, for youth, for housing, redevelopment, economic development, just as we all talk about out here, economic development. It's needed. If you have more people employed, you have less people out there committing crimes, less violence, less burglaries, less stealing, less crime, period. Um, but... You know, the city of Chicago is huge. Uh, I was told that, and I want to bring them because I want to know more about the Chicago Police Department, how they work with their safety, how many people are actually in the force, how many police officers, how many squad cars, versus how many gang members are out there, how many gangs. If I'm correct, I was told possibly 300,000. I don't know. That sounds kind of big, but I want to find out. Don't quote me on that, all right? And... um and see what Frederick Collins has to say about all this that's happening in Chicago right now. He will be running against uh, Rahm Emanuel in 2015. But this is more uh, of an interview of what's actually happening right now, what's going on with all those crimes, <clears throat> all the shootings out there. I want to hear it, but I would like for you guys to hear it too because 
we share common stories. Um, you know, here in Northwest Indiana, we too are getting um, quite a bit of shootings and crime and all of that. And uh, I, I saw something that was reported by the, what is it called, the Gazette News, Mars? Is that what it's called? But, you know, I Googled it. I asked Omar to Google it. Is it in other media? You know what? As I was leaving to come to the radio, mm -hmm. uh, I heard it on uh, 103.9. You did? Yeah, they just they had just announced it once I turned the car on. Wouldn't you think that's strange, though? And when I say wouldn't you think that's strange, because we have bigger media than this Gazette, this Gazette Citizen Hammond that writes incidents in Hammond, Indiana. I just said I can't believe everything I read, especially when it's only in one source of media, and it's not the Times, it's Northwest Indiana Gazette. It's not the Tribune, it's Northwest Indiana Gazette. School zone becomes war zone in Hesville. This is by Ken Davidson. This happened around 1 a.m. this morning in Hesville. Too close for comfort, guys. A quiet neighborhood directly across from Hess Elementary School became a war zone. 26-year-old Kevin Campbell Jr. was a victim of the violence. Coroner Marilee Frey reports that Campbell was pronounced dead at 2 a.m. as a result of multi multiple gunshot wounds. According to witnesses, at least three gunmen fired 40 shots or more into the vehicle in which Campbell was sitting. One witness described the sound as that of a jackhammer. The building across from the incident sustained three gunshots. At least one of the gunshots entered through a window. At least uh, pierced an interior well and went into a, a top floor apartment. Another balcony showed two gunshot marks. Three vehicles had visible gunshot holes. The Gazette is following this story and will update it as the day goes on. Well, it shows the vehicles that were sustained damage from the gunfire, the house. But, you know, Omar, now question is, since you heard it on a radio station, did they get the information from this as I'm reading it? You know, it makes me wonder because our local times or Tribune, you were looking for it, you searched, and they did not report this. Yep, you're right. And uh, but uh, later on, my uh, my girlfriend told me that uh, she was on Facebook, and how she found out about it was there were posts late last night. They were saying, "I think I heard gunshots. I think I heard gunshots." So, you know, there's that too. So, but still, I'm still questioning the other media, the other newspapers. We we didn't hear about this, and this is big. Thirty gunshots, war zone, Hesville. These are all bullets that were flying everywhere in Hammond, Indiana. How true is this? I don't know. Omar said he heard it on the radio, but where did they get that source from, that information? It's good sometimes to investigate before one speaks that it's true, that this is happening, that this is a fact. You've got to make sure that these are facts. And uh, I'm not saying that it didn't happen, but... Crime is everywhere, just like I said, um, and, and it's unfortunate. We, we do have to continue to work together, to come together, and, and to make it safer for our kids. So much safer. And, you know, I was uh, watching, uh, well, I don't know if this is a video or not. Omar, I'm going to send this to you. I was reading, actually, this article, and, and yes, you may tell me, Eve, this is old news. This is news every day because this happens every day somewhere in the world. Bullying. This is WLTH AM 1370. For those of you that just joined me, thank you for uh, being here and listening to Sound Off with EVE. It's 22 minutes after the hour, and if you want to call in and sound off on anything you'd like to or from what you've heard me talk about, please chime in at 219-885-1371. Well, this is what a parent had to do, and you guys heard me talk about true stories that are happening out here. I'm going to see how much I, I can accomplish tomorrow visiting some of these schools tomorrow pertaining to bullies, and it's got to stop. It's got to stop because here's what a mom did 
Mom posted a video of her daughter crying online in an effort to stop her school bullies. Why must one, why must a parent have to go that far? I'll hold that thought. Let's see what this caller has to say. Go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, hey ma'am. How are you doing? Hey, good. How are you, Anja? I'm doing better. Um, I was sounding off about, you know, about what you were talking about, uh, about the, the violence and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, first of all, these policemen, the sheriff included, sheriff department, you know, they're not doing a complete job. I seen it firsthand yesterday because mm. where I live at, it's, it's, you know, it's drug infested. That's, that's another war zone, right? <laughs> it's, a, it's drug infested. <laughs> it's crazy. And then, these, and then the, the grandparents, the parents, you know, it goes into the bulliness because I'm sitting out there. You know, they take they take some guy in. You know, they should have taken the car with them that they found the stuff in with. Mm -hmm. No, they gave it to the girl, you know, because she wants the keys, you know? They did oh, my goodness. And, and you, you know what? Now that you're mentioning that, I was talking to a, a, a couple from East Chicago mm -hmm. and also that witnessed things of what you just said. Mm -hmm. But they said, and I, oh, hate is a very strong word, okay, and I don't hate. But I know. this doesn't sound right. Listen to this that the mayor of East Chicago saw crime happening in front of his eyes. Really? And didn't do anything about it. You're kidding me. No. Including some officers. So yeah. burglary is going up because they're not doing anything about it. So if people that want to go steal know that the city or the, the police enforcement aren't doing much about it, they're going to continue to do exactly it. Exactly, because... It wasn't just yesterday, Friday. Wow. Friday, this girl was had her car parked in the middle of the street with her children, you know, jumping out the windows. And these were little kids, oh. like four, like five, and a three-year-old. And the mother was inside the house, you know, you know, I don't know what she was doing. She was talking with her neighbor. And I went in, I, I came inside, and I said, I said, hey, the police is out there. You know, he should have given her a ticket for not having car seats for her children. Oh my goodness! And that's that's a danger zone. Just and you know, and you know what? That. He did not give her no ticket, and he seen her down the street, parked on the middle of the street for 20 minutes because I was wow. sitting outside. And you know, he did not give her no ticket. He, you know, he just told the kids that they shouldn't be jumping around, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, you know, if you're well, gonna, if you know, hmm. if you're gonna wear blinders, you don't need the job. And they're not doing a good job. And they are not doing. They not are at not all. doing. And I. And you know what? I called today to the sheriff's department, and I called to the police department. They came. You know, they they blew me off. They blew me wow. off. Wow. Wow. See, and, and when when they need the community, they turn their back on the community. But first of all, that officer saw that those kids are at risk. He should have done something they were jumping, about they it. They were hanging up the window on the on the on. That's you know, illegal. Where they could have gotten hit. You know, hit their head cut off. That's illegal. That's against the law. He just gave them, you know, he said, no, you need to sit down and put your seatbelt on. Children are supposed to have their car seats, you know, and, you know, and, and then again with this, with the sheriff's yesterday, the sheriff officers okay. yesterday, they were supposed to have taken the car with them. They, you know, who knows if there was more stuff, more stuff, whatever they found in that, in that car. Wow. You know? Well, that that's just sad. And, you know, and I like that you're calling in because that's what Sounding Off is all about in this program. Tell us what you're listening to, what you're hearing, what you're seeing, because, you know, I got a big mouth, and, and my mouth is, is to protect our community, to protect our elderly, exactly. our kids, to secure, to make sure that what people or the people we vote for are doing their job. You know, and then these, and then these kids, they see, the, you know, these young kids that are in the school system, they see this stuff, you know, and, you know, and you know I'm you know, I'm 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 as old as dirt, okay. Well, and you know, know and these, that, these okay. kids that you know that where I live around, I have to move from here because it's just getting so ridiculous with the with the parents and the kids that are you know just you know like you know like I don't know what they want to do with me, but you know what they're gonna get us they're gonna get us a prize of their life. They try to do they, if they try to do something to me, well. I'm gonna tell you that right now. That's so sad to hear, Andrea, and thank you for sharing what you've witnessed out there in your city. And I, like I said, I've been told stories as well, and I just shake my head. But um, mm, no. it, it, we have to speak out. We have to break that code of silence. Exactly. Thank yeah. you so much. Okay. I appreciate that, Andrea. Bye-bye. Thank you. 
And the, again, the views expressed by the host and the callers of the show, not necessarily the views of WLTH radio management owners and sponsors. We are entitled to our own opinion. But if I'm going to read something, I'm going to tell you where I got it from. Uh, or if it's my opinion, then I will let you know it is my opinion or it is my feeling. It's my heart. It's my spirit. This is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm, I'm reading. This is what I'm hearing. But I have parents coming to me and telling me these things. Guys, we got to stop this. Our own government is not doing anything about it or not enough about it. So what's the deal? What's, what's really going on? Somebody's slacking. Somebody's sleeping. Please wake them up. You're listening to WLTH Radio. This is AM 1370 on your radio dial. Don't go anywhere. Be right back after this. The Majestic Star Casino presents Angelo Winbush, an American R&B soul singer and songwriter. Friday, May 23rd for two shows, 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Purchase tickets at the Majestic Star Casino box office. Angelo Winbush, Friday, May 23rd for two shows, 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. for two shows only. Angelo Winbush at the Majestic Star Casino. Methodist Hospitals is offering a free day of health screenings, valuable health information, and fun. Methodist Hospitals Free Spring Community Health Fair is Saturday, May 17th at U.S. Steel Yard, home of the Gary South Shore Railcats in downtown Gary. Don't miss live experts, free screenings, plus free health info from Methodist Hospitals and other health care exhibitors. Lots of free raffles and prizes. Free parking in the VIP lot off Pennsylvania Street. Methodist Hospital's Free Spring Community Health Fair at U.S. Steel Yard. Saturday, May 17th from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Presented by Methodist Hospitals, the Gary South Shore Railcats, and the Lake County Minority Health Coalition. Methodist Hospitals, leading the way to better health. All right, welcome back. This is Sound Off with EVE. And we were talking about East Chicago. Those of you that just uh, tuned in, if you are out there in your vehicles, please, you can sound off at 219-885-1371. We're talking about East Chicago, things that are coming to me. Uh, it's just, you know, as I say, SMH, shake in my head. Uh, and, and sometimes you want to just say, really? Is that really happening? Is that true? Well, you've got residents calling and talking about it, about all these cities that we're not protected like we should. So communities, we have to take over. We have to protect our community, our neighborhood, our kids. You know, I thank God that I've been in a neighborhood that's been quiet. I'm going to knock on wood. I don't want to speak too soon. I thank God that my kids are safe. I'm safe. But when you walk out, you don't know what can happen. If that is true, what happened in Hedsville, that's too close for comfort. 1 a.m., first of all, you're going to ask, what was the dude sitting in the car doing at 1 a.m., right? 30 shots, sound like a jackhammer. You're going to be scared for your life in that area, in any zone, or as we call it, a war zone. So what are we supposed to do? Sit back and continue to watch? Not do anything? Let me know when you have that up, Mars. I'm going to read some of some of the things before uh, that video. You're listening to Sound Off with EVE, 219-885-1371. And this is another thing that schools aren't doing, defending the students that are being bullied. So this was what this mother did. And I am going to let all of you that are listening to me right now Take that advice if you feel that you must need to do this. This lady, this mom, felt the need to post the video of her daughter crying online in effort to stop her school bullies. A Minnesota mother is hoping a video she posted online will help stop the bullying of her daughter on the school bus. The mother says her little girl has visited the principal's office at least half a dozen times to ask for help. The video that is already, well, it's been shared, and you're going to hear it here on WLTH Radio, shows a third-grade girl crying and unable to talk about the bullying that she has been experiencing. Her brother has to describe what the bullying at school is like for his big sister as she cries her eyes out. 
This guy on the playground said, you're going to die by suicide. They call me a son of a bleep and a mother bleep, the brother said. You tell her you're stronger than that. You're better than that. You tell them that they're worth something because they feel they're worth nothing. You tell them that there's adults and people to help you. There are people to help you. The school will help you, said Mother Sarah um, Chambolak. Foston Public School Superintendent Mark Noner said this just landed on his radar despite his parents' claim that they've been trying to get something done since December. This sounds too true, and others can probably relate to this. They've been trying to get something done since December. I found out about the situation a couple of days ago, and I think it could have been resolved without going to Facebook, said Noner. Noner or Noner is the school superintendent. She's been called into the principal and made to feel like it's her fault. She's been told to ignore it. She's been told to disregard it. Basically, she's been told to stuff your emotions and get on with a life. This is her mom talking. So you'll see in the video, she tells the audience she went to the principal five times about the incident, and she said nothing was done. Just listen. Obviously, it, somewhere along the line, it fell through the, crisis, uh, through the cracks. So we need to review our procedures and policies and maybe do a better job articulating to the parents that we're doing, even though we can't be specific, we need to do a better job of getting the communication out there. Noner said, you think? Really? Since December, they've been trying to do something? Something's wrong with this world. Something's wrong with these schools. We're ignoring these children that are being bullied day after day after day after day. And, you know, everybody, all these uh, officials and, and companies, they, they want to throw in the word protocol. That word has been thrown at my face several times. You've got to follow protocol. Well, you follow protocol and look what happens. Let me know when you have it. Just give me a thumbs up. you 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 got to know that this protocol isn't always working. This mom had to do this to stop or put an end to, to this. That's a nightmare for her third grade daughter. For her to have been called to the principal's office and make it feel like it's her fault? Wow. Mm -mm -mm. Listen. And Eric Crest of Affiliate KXJB says the video is viral, and the mom is having to defend herself for taping it. Tell me how it makes you feel. It makes me feel bad. Yeah. It makes me scared. Yeah. And I don't like it. I know. You're watching a video that has already been shared on Facebook you more than 10,000 times in less than 24 hours. Just, you tell them there's adults to help you, there's people to help you, the school will help you. But the Boston superintendent says this just landed on his radar, despite these parents claim that they've been trying to get something done since December. I found out about the situation um, a couple days ago. And I think it could have been resolved uh, without going um, to Facebook. She's been called into the principals and made to feel like it's her fault. She's been told to ignore it. She's been told to disregard it. Basically, she's been told to stuff her emotions and get on with life. Can you tell me how many times you've been in and told the principal about it? Like five. Okay. Can you tell me what they've done about it? Nothing. And school officials admit they dropped the ball. Obviously, somewhere along the line, it, it fell through the cracks, um, you know, and, and so we need to review our, our procedures and policies and maybe do a better job of articulating to the parents of, you know, uh, what we're doing. Thanks to Eric Kress of Affiliate wow, K. Really? You think? Somebody dropped the ball, a big one. What do you guys think about that? If you're listening, don't be shy and call me. What do you guys think about that? You're listening to Sound Off with EVE here on WLTH Radio. You are allowed to make two calls, two minute a call. Sound off on this ridiculous, hideous lack of action on the school officials, school principal, teachers, what have you.
Hey, can, can I say something real quick? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm I'm over here watching the video and and I just kind of found find it funny how well not funny but it's funny how when the principal was talking you know he's denying everything and whatnot he just he just looks and sounds stupid. Uh, well, he does sound stupid, and, and for, for him to say, oh, we could have resolved this and without going on Facebook, really? Oh, Martin, come on, don't be shy either. Speak. Oh, you, said, you said what I wanted to say. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe we all need to do that. Take a page from this woman's book. You know, I know that she, she exposed her daughter. She's a minor, but her mom obviously has the right and the authority to do so. But she figured, how else can I help my daughter? How else can I stop them from doing this? Well, hey, expose them, people. Expose them. Make some noise. And that's what I'll tell anybody. I've told the families that have come to me, make some noise. Let's bring the media. They'll stop. Hit them where it counts. A lawsuit, press charges. What else are we supposed to do if we got to keep our children safe? How can they learn in school when you got somebody that also has problems, that also needs help because a bully is a victim of some type of circumstance? A bully has issues as well. And you know who the bigger bullies are? Let me tell you something. That principal, whoever made that third grader feel guilty or that it was her fault, they're bullies. In that training that I went to, that I'm going to bring some training here because I don't see it, we're supposed to have a safety council in the schools from what I have found out because there is a national safety council. Every school should have it because I know that there's a lot of havoc going on in these schools. Not just bullying, threats, kids with low self-esteem, gangs, drugs. So you don't have a lot of staff to take care of all those problems. So we need to step up and bring the safety council to all the schools. That is the place to go to so they can handle that situation. Unfortunately, principals are not handling their situation. And I'm going to keep repeating it because it's keep, it, it keeps happening. Washington School, middle school, it's happening. There's a lot of witnesses saying, Eve, they're not doing anything about it. Eve, they're not doing anything about it. Did you report it to the school? Did you report it to the teacher? Did you report it to the principal? Yes. And the message even went to the superintendent. But yet we want to glorify them. We want to say, nice job, you're doing great. Until something happens. That's when they open their eyes. You guys heard this principal mention it, that it didn't have to go that far, that they could have resolved it and not go to Facebook. One time is one too many. This child said she went five times to the office. And then it made her feel like it was her fault. Just like, shut up and listen. Don't do anything. It's more serious than you think, guys. It's 42 minutes after the hour. I have a special song I want you guys to hear. And she sent a special message. Um, it was actually, she put it out there for her mom. She is a singer. And she has a story behind her song. And actually, they're going to they're going to interview her tonight. I just don't know for sure which TV channel she'll be on pertaining to the song um, that I'm going to play. And it's called My Daughter, I believe. Omar, is that, am I correct on that? Mom's Song. I'm sorry, Mom's Song. Um, and uh, I'm glad that uh, it was posted on Facebook. I, I get information from there, and she has a story behind it, so those that um, watch the news tonight will actually hear her story, what's behind that song. I pray that you guys don't sit and say I'm bored with this song. Listen to the message 
very moving message for parents, for kids, because there's love and faith and hope lacking in many homes, in many schools. Shoot, we don't even have prayer anymore in the schools. And it's so needed. It's just so needed. But we have to teach our kids to have hope and faith and believe that there is hope and faith. Go ahead, Omar, and play that, would you please? We may not hear the whole thing. I don't know how long it is, but just listen. Promise to never let me go. Kept that little promise that you made 18 years ago. You watched me as I learned to crawl. Tried to stand and took my first fall. Never left my side. You held me through it all. You held my hand when I would stand. You always knew what to say. You showed me love behind your tears. Made me who I am today. Everyone who meets you wants to know more about you. And everyone who knows you knows your beautiful soul. And everyone who sees you sees yourself as love and mercy. And everyone who hears you hears your heart. You're sensational, inspirational, but more importantly, you're my mom. Who knows where I would be without your love and sympathy? Those days when I was low as could be, you were always. Right next to me And I know that I get selfish And forget to say I love you And I know that sometimes I think I know it all But you still hold my hand When I get scared And you always know what to Everyone who meets you wants to know more about you, and everyone who knows you knows your beautiful soul, and everyone who sees you sees yourself as love and mercy, and everyone who hears you
Welcome back. This is WLTH Radio, AM 1370, on your radio dial. Hope you guys have been enjoying this program. This is information. This is real talk about real issues with real people. Sound off with EVE here on WLTH Radio. It's 49 minutes after the hour, and the show is almost over. Got a few minutes left. We've got to talk about the weather. You think there's going to be rain? No, there's going to be snow. Hey, don't say it too loud. <laughs> don't say that too loud or too proud because with this type of weather, you just never know. Look what took place on Sunday, and the sun was shining beautifully this morning. Actually, it was overcast, and the sun just kind of like came out out of nowhere. And hey, whoever that's waving or beeping. And now it's overcast. It's cold. It almost feels like fall wants to come back. Knock on wood. What do you guys think? 219-85-1371. The thing is, uh, with the weather, sometimes people's mood changes. If it's cloudy, people get moody. If it's cold, they get moody, negative, foul, even vulgar. How about that? Why, do, why should we let God's creation control our emotions? That's, that's pretty messed up, isn't it? 50 minutes after the hour, and here in Gary, Indiana, it's 56 degrees. It's looking like it's going to be showering. It was drizzling uh, a tad bit earlier. That's in, in Gary, Indiana. And in Aurora, 50 to 54 degrees and cloudy. Baltimore, partly sunny, 80 degrees. Washington, partly sunny, 86 degrees. Orlando, partly sunny, 85 degrees. Houston, Texas, partly sunny, 70 degrees. Las Vegas, sunny at 79. And Los Angeles, whopping 93 and sunny. Wow. Barcelona, España, 61 degrees and partly cloudy. And Celaya, Mexico, intermittent clouds, 87 degrees. And Toronto, intermittent clouds, 72 degrees. Let's see what we're going to have for the rest of the week. I know that there's rain coming. The grass has got to get greener. My grass needs to get greener, so it needs more water. But unfortunately, it's creating havoc because people are getting water into their basements. For those that were fixing their roofs, they got water leaking into their rooms, bedrooms, house, wherever. So, yes, guys, we're going to have more water. It's going to drop to 44 degrees tonight. It's 56 degrees currently right now. Tomorrow, May 14th. We're going to get some showers, 57 degrees, rather cloudy and cooler, occasional rain and drizzle in the afternoon, 557, and then it's going to drop to 42 degrees, rather cloudy and chilly with a bit of rain. It's going to feel like 34 degrees at nighttime for tomorrow. Then come Thursday, May 15, 54 degrees, mostly cloudy, windy and cool with a couple of showers and a thunderstorm. Then at nighttime, it's going to be 40 degrees. It's going to feel like 30 degrees, chilly with rain. Wow, I just had the air conditioner on yesterday because it was a bit too hot in the house. It was humid. Then I was cold all night. So, oh, well, good sleeping weather when it's the 50s, 60 degrees. 56 for Friday, variable cloudiness with a brief shower or two, and it's going to be cool. And at night, it's going to be 33 degrees, mainly clear and cold, freezing temperature in the normally colder spots. For Saturday, we got a lot of outdoor activity going on on Saturday, so it's going to be 56 degrees, times of clouds and sun with a shower possible remaining cool, and at night it's going to be 38 degrees, clear and chilly. So at least we don't get rain. I think we're good. We just wear a light jacket, sweatshirt, and we're all good. Then come Sunday, 62 degrees on a high, mostly sunny, and it may feel a little warmer, of course, because uh, maybe some humidity. Uh, the precipitation will be 13 uh, percent, and at night it's going to drop to 42 degrees, clear and chilly. So sunrise, it's up in 5 a.m., like 5:20 a.m., 5:28 a.m. And it's going to start warming up a little bit on Monday. 65 degrees, abundant sunshine, and it's going to be 42 degrees on a low at night, partly cloudy and chilly. So we're going to get 50s, and we're going to get to 60s. And then on Monday, 69, mostly cloudy with a couple of showers mainly later. And at night, it's going to drop to 48 degrees overcast with a couple of showers mainly early. So that is brought to you by the Weather Channel here, WLTH Radio, something I can pull up excessively here on my cellular. Thank goodness for technology. How about that? And it's May 13 today. It's 53 minutes after the hour. 
Hope you guys have enjoyed what I brought to you thus far for the year here on WLTH Radio. This is Sound Off with EVE. And, well, I just have a few minutes left. Anyone wants to sound off or call in or tell me, hey, Eve, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that or something. I don't know. I must be doing good. You know, Omar saying, I'm surprised, Eve. I mean, Mom. But, you know, we're going to have that health fair coming up on uh, Saturday. Then we got the special games also in East Chicago. Um, the marching band, Martin March Band, is actually invited to be part of it. Um, so that's a, a great thing as well. We're going to have the health fair. Then we, at the Soldier Field, we're going to have the Autism Speak Walk. We're expecting 25, 28,000 people at the Soldier Field on Saturday as well. And I want to want to add something real quick. Uh, I know I took the picture of the flyer, um, and I met this lady, um, and you know she asked for my assistance to help her. And, you know, why not? Um, it, it's actually, uh, uh, I believe it should be a very exciting, and I, I'm going to see if I can go if I, I got the time. Well, I'll make the time. That's the thing. I make time. Uh, and see if I can be part of uh, this historical moment. Um, actually, it's going to be, oh, you know what, before I forget, that a cultural competency uh, workshops coming up to our workshop, Cultural Competency, Building Culturally Competitive Individuals, Community Organizations, Scale pro, uh, Parent Project Breakthrough. This is uh, Friday, May 23rd from 11 to 1 at Uni Indiana University Northwest, Hawthorne Hall, Room 107, two-hour workshop. Uh, that would be uh, an excellent thing to send uh, teachers, to send faculty, administrators, school education uh, facilitators or, or, or teachers or uh, counselors or what have you, uh, to come to this two-hour workshop. The, facil the facilitator will be Laura smith Wynn, Executive Director of the Indiana Parenting Institute. Please RSVP by the 21st. Contact Belinda Kelly, 219-886-1111, 886 -1111. You must RSVP. Uh, by Thursday, May 21st, and also um, the it's uh, historical, and I'm looking for it. It's the Underground Railroad. Um, I'd love to go. Um, I was uh, it, I learned that you know the Underground Railroad, uh, Black history. I learned all that in elementary school at Spalding. Not many kids are being taught that type of history nowadays. Uh, so that's coming up, and I know that she is in need of, um, oh, where did I do with it? I'll bring up the information with you guys tomorrow. I thought I had it here on my phone. Um, I'm going to uh, bring that information to you, and, you know, anyone that would like to participate and join me in the bus to go to Cincinnati, Ohio, to um, see and learn about the Underground Railroad. I think that would be an, an excellent history field trip. You know, seniors from high school and college to join on this field trip. So I'll bring you more information on that tomorrow. Continue to listen to WLTH Radio. My time has come up now. Um, so I'll be back tomorrow, Wednesday, God willing, at 5 o'clock. So continue to listen to WLTH Radio. This is Sound Off with EBE. Be safe out there. Don't drive crazy and drink responsibly if you must. But as I've always said... When you wake up in the morning and when you go to bed, make sure that you smile, say a prayer, and then I love you as well. Peace to you all. Love you. When we come together. Racism, we feel shame. No one wants to take the blame. Through the fire, we all will hang. With love, we can change when we all come together.